Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. I'm flying solo this week, but we've got a really fun show lined up for you this week. We're going to talk about pitch calling and the challenges of calling pitches with an 0-2 count and some things that I think everybody should be thinking about in relationship to that dilemma or opportunity, however you want to see it. Before we get into that discussion, though, let's talk about our sponsors. First, the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And again, make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. It's a great way for you to save that additional 20% and also support the podcast at the same time. Also, we'd like for you to become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. We've got a great group of patrons that have been supporting us for a long time, but we want to get more people on board. So if you're in a position where you can help us, we would love for you to jump on board and become a patron. Again, go to patreon.com slash everything fast pitch. It's five, 10 or $20 a month. And we would love for you to come on board and help to support the podcast. So if you see value in what we're doing, you want us to keep doing it, please become a patron. So the idea of what to do when we've got an O2 count. I keep seeing things, keep having discussions with people that have the opinion that when a pitcher gets to an O2 count, that somehow giving up a hit when they've got an O2 count is like the greatest sin that's ever been committed in the game of softball. And now, don't get me wrong, when you've worked to get to an O2 count, I think the hitcher has so many advantages that they should be able to get an out in that situation. But the one thing that people keep talking about is that you know, when that pitcher's got an 0-2 count, she should be throwing a ball in the other batter's box. She should be throwing a pitch that's three feet out of the zone. She should be you know, throwing a pitch that can't be hit in a million years. And to me, that is the problem and the illogical assumption that a lot of people make when that pitcher's work to get that 0-2 count. What I think we really want to be doing is helping our pitchers understand that they've worked really hard to get to a really big advantage. That big advantage now sets them up where they can make a pitch It's very, very difficult to hit, but it's got to look like it's going to have a chance to be a strike if it's ever going to be effective. The reality of it is hitters are getting so good and have gotten so much better that the days of getting an 0-2 pitch and then throwing a ball three feet out of the zone and somebody swinging and missing are really dead and gone. Now, I know at the very youngest levels, the entry levels, that that still is, is something that we see, but... That's just disappearing very, very quickly. And as kids get a little bit better, and they start playing at a little bit higher level. The rate of kids that are swinging at pitches that are never going to be around the strike zone, that never have a chance to be a strike, is getting to be a pretty small list. So what should our pitcher really be doing? I want him to throw a pitch that's very, very difficult to hit. But I want him to throw a pitch that starts off looking like it's got a chance to be a strike. So if it's a pitcher who's got movement, if it's a pitcher who can bend the ball and and make it break, you know, a curve ball that looks like it's going to be on the corner, but ends up breaking off a a drop ball. that looks like it's going to be at the knees, but ends up dropping down out of the zone, a rise ball. that looks like it's going to be belt high, belly button high rises up out of the zone. Something that ends up by the time it gets to the hitter, it's a very, very difficult pitch to hit, but the hitter had to think for at least a split second while they're evaluating what's happening. This pitch is going to be strike three, so I have to swing at it. The number of kids that are going to chase that really bad pitch is so small now that I think, I mean, when you watch these college games, you've got hitters that won't swing at a pitch that's a quarter of an inch off the plate. And college game now, the strike zone's gotten so tight that that quarter of an inch off the plate doesn't get called a strike very often. So if we can't get them to swing at a pitch that's a quarter inch or a half an inch off the plate, the thought that we're going to get them to swing at a pitch that's a foot off the plate is really kind of ridiculous to me. And so, you know, the idea is we have to train our pitchers to take advantage of the fact that because they've got two strikes, the hitter's still a little bit nervous, they're still a little bit antsy, they're still a little bit worried about getting called out on strikes. So we can have a pitch that looks like it might be a strike that ends up not being hittable, that has a chance to still be successful, get us a strikeout or a, or a weekly hit ball. But the days of 
throwing that 0-2 pitch a mile out of the zone and, and kids swinging and missing at it, I think, are pretty much gone. Now, why is this important from coach prep's perspective? Coaches, we've got to have a much better strategy with our, with our pitchers and catchers to help them understand. The reason I think this is important is, especially younger pitchers, but I think pitchers of all ages can fall into this trap, they want the strikeout so bad that when they get to that 0-2 count, they lose perspective on, well, how do I need to get it? So they think, well, I threw a strike right down the middle and she didn't swing at the first one, so maybe I can throw a strike right down the middle for the third one and she won't swing at this one too, or if she does, she'll swing and miss. Well, the coaching piece has to take over there and help her understand and help your pitcher and catcher understand that hitter's mentality changes as the, as the at-bat changes, as the count changes. And so she might be super aggressive with two strikes and hit the exact same pitch that she took for strike one just because of the fact that you've gotten ahead of her. She might be just that much more locked in and that much more ready to hit because now that you've gotten ahead of her, she's really afraid that you're going to do something to make her look bad and get her out. So what do we have to do? We have to spend more time working with our pitchers on the strategy of how to get people out. If they get strikeouts, that's great. Just because you've gotten to an 0-2 count doesn't mean that the world owes you a strikeout. You and your parents are going to have to get come to grips with the fact that if you can get her to you know, swing at a drop ball that's you know, you know, ankle high and hit a ground ball back to you or hit a ground ball to the third baseman that's an easy out, that that's still a really big win for you as a pitcher. But I think I keep seeing over and over again where you know, the lack of understanding and kids maybe believing that the strikeout is more important, that somehow they get credit for more than one out when they get a strikeout, I think is something we have to start changing that attitude. So I think a lot of that falls on us as coaches and then as coaches helping our players and their parents, pitchers' parents, understand that you know, the whole idea of getting an out is the most important thing. A few years ago, I had the good fortune of working with a really good 18 and under team. One pitcher was a very dominating strikeout pitcher. Another pitcher was very good. They both ended up being very good Division I players. But one girl felt like every time the ball got put in play, even if it was a dinky little pop-up or a, or a five-hopper to the shortstop, that that was a, a failure on her part because she didn't get a strikeout. The other girl was more than happy to have a three- or four-pitch inning, get three or four ground balls, you know, and, and be in the dugout in a hurry. And so reason that that was so important was the second girl, the girl that was more less worried about the strikeouts and more worried about just getting out, had a much better long-term career because she was willing to, in that 0-2 situation, throw a pitch that was far enough off the plate that it, and when the hitter hit it, they were going to hit it, but they were going to hit it weakly. Um, she wasn't so worried about them getting a strikeout versus the girl that was so worried about getting a strikeout and felt like she was a failure if she got a pop-up instead of a strikeout to, to look at that 0-2 situation totally differently. And so, and really all pitches totally differently. So it's up to us as coaches, get our pitchers and catchers on board with the idea that an out is an out and that's all that really matters. If we've got that big advantage, we're 0-2 in the count. We want to use that to our advantage, but it doesn't necessarily mean we have to get a strikeout but we don't want to waste our energy either. The idea of throwing a pitch that's three feet off the plate is nothing other than just wasting a pitch. It's wasting your energy. It's you know going to make you that much more tired later in the game. Um, you know if you do that to you know ten or twelve hitters a game, that's ten or twelve useless pitches that absolutely have no chance of being successful. So let's work on the strategy, help our players understand it, and let's incorporate it a little bit more effectively. And let's stop freaking out if a kid gives up a hit on zero and two. As long as we're using our strategy and understanding our philosophy on what we're trying to do. If they're trying to make that pitch look like it's going to just nip the corner and they make a mistake and hang one once in a while, that's still going to happen. But as long as they're understanding what we're trying to get done and working the whole strategy, I think we're going to be better off, way better off in the long run. So that's going to wrap up this edition of Coach Prep. Please make sure you reach out to us with questions, comments, ideas, or topics you want us to talk about at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. Make sure you go to the fastpitchprep.com website. You can order your square cuts training discs there. We also have access to the YouTube channel and the blog post. There's tons and tons of information available on the fastpitchprep.com website. Make sure that you uh, uh, support the Everything Fast Pitch podcast. Listen to that also. Hopefully next week, Coach Don and I will be back together, and we'll have another coach prep for you uh, to, to listen to, and we'll uh, get into another juicy topic. So. Have a good week, and we'll talk to you again next week.